So are you, are you ready to buy your last speaker? You've been an audiophile for a while. You're not 20 or 30. You've been in the game. You've owned a lot of speakers. You've heard countless speakers at shows, at stores, at friends. You've heard, you've heard it. And you've, you've gone down some dead ends. You've tried horn speakers. You've tried electrostatic speakers. You've, you've done it. And you're tired of just hopping from one thing to the next. And you're ready. You're ready to commit. That's what it is. You're ready to commit to get the last speaker. Now, you know, uh, the last speaker may not be the latest and greatest new speaker. It might actually be a classic speaker. A few months ago, and I'll link to that directly below, uh, I listened to these um, uh, Tannoy Arden concentric speakers from the 70s, big 15 inch driver, and I heard them at uh, Stereo Exchange and uh, whoosh, blew me away. It was just, yeah, you know, the problem with modern speakers is that they tend to be smaller, uptight little boxes. You know, here's a big honkin box speaker from 40 years ago and you just crank that puppy up and you feel the music it's not coming out a little tiny thing no it's got it's got gust it's got grunt it's got slam it's got power and finesse and detail and some degree of clarity so you know or i have a i have a couple of friends that have and have owned uh quad esl 57s and uh, they're never going to change. They have their last speakers and they're happy. They're not tempted to really change. They may talk a little bit about changing, but now they're going to stick with those speakers because they're the right speakers for them. And that's what this whole thing about the last speaker is. It's the, it's the right, it's not the speaker for everybody. It's the right speaker for you. It's the one that you can commit to. And, um, how you get there? Well, I think you might actually have an inkling of what that speaker is because you've heard a lot, right? If you're still unsure and you're, you're hopping from one speaker to the next, to the next, to the next, yes, that means you're not ready to f finalize your decision, right? You know, and new speakers, the latest and greatest new speaker can be hugely distracting. And maybe it might be the, the, the last speaker for you. You know, some speaker that's just coming out in 2019 might be the last speaker. Might be. Or it might be a new speaker that's kind of like an old speaker, like the Wharfdale Lintons I just uh, reviewed recently. Um, that's a new speaker, but it's in this line from from before from the actually dating back to the 60s it shares nothing in common with the 60s or 70s or 80s version of the Wharfdale Linton but it's a it's a heritage it's literally it's called the Linton heritage it carries on that tradition right you know or it might be um you know it might be a Harbeth I think Harbeth might actually be the kind of a company that makes speakers that are the last speakers for a certain type of audiophile. You know, there's this guy, Michael, who watches this show, and he bought uh, Klipschla Scholars recently. He, he hasn't called, I maybe he has called them his last speaker, but it, it, it is the kind of speaker that people would land on and say, yeah, that's it. Big, kind of, in a way, like the Tannoy Arden's the, the speaker you big hunkin speaker that just music just flows out of these big boxes. Yeah, you know, I mean the, the not all big. The the Harbeth I just referred to the P3 is a small speaker, and that might be the one. Uh, you know JBL L100 not my dream speaker in any way, shape, or form. It was actually ironically when I was 20, but not. Not in a long time. And there's this new version of it, the L100 Classic from JBL. It kind of looks like the original. doesn't have any parts from the original. But uh, that might be it. I think, I think a number of JBLs might fall into that category for various people. As an aside, I, and this isn't the last speaker probably for anybody, but I'm reviewing, we're going to review of these JBL Stage A170 speakers. Retail for about five hundred dollars a pair. Gettable for around four. Whoa, 
Yeah, JBL still getting there. It still has their act together, man. That is a killer speaker for that kind of money. But that's an aside. That's probably not a last speaker for anybody. But um, and electrostatics like the quads could be, horns could be, magnet pans might be for some people. So it comes in all shapes or forms. And speaking of speakers that last a long time, Zoo speakers made in Ogden, Utah, with this big 10-inch driver, co uh, not coax, uh, full-range driver. I could see Zoos being the right speaker to get to as your final speaker. I think that they should be in the running for some people. Not Again, there's no universals here. There's no universal everybody loves speaker. Not, not even close, actually, not in my opinion. So I guess I guess one thing that would make a speaker universal, at least for a new speaker, is that it's it it's made by a company that's going to be around for the long haul. So if you need service down the road, uh, they might be there to give you a part or two. You know. Now I did a <laughs> speaking of service, just have to throw in one more time. I did a dig, uh, a little rant about active speakers recently, and said, well, one of the concerns with active speaker is that since the amplifier is crammed inside the box with the driver uh, and the amplifier is producing heat and it's crammed inside there, that they may not be the ones that have long, long lifespans into the many decades of use as some passive speakers are. You know, I, I, and I'll try to figure out what this one is. This, this was a Western Electric the company, Western Electric, they made a a box speaker, really early uh, high fidelity speaker from the 40s. And I did a story about it. And this speaker was, you know, so easily 60 plus years old when I did the story. And um, it was being sold by the original owner that bought it in the 40s, 1946, 1947. It turned out to be his last speaker up until relative well I don't think it was 10 years ago maybe five years ago it was his last speaker I don't know if he thought about that when he got it in the 40s but you buy the right one could be the last one if you've already made that commitment and bought your last speaker tell us about it in the comments section below this video if I started the ball rolling for you thinking about your last speaker Share, share your thoughts down there as well. My name is Steve Guttenberg. This is the Audiophiliac Daily Show. Comes up daily. Subscribe. Get that little, hit that little notification bell so when you subscribe, you'll be notified for every exciting new episode. And uh, share, like, thumbs up thing, all that good social media stuff. If you really like these things, check out my Patreon page, which can be found at... P A T R E O N dot com slash audiophiliac. Thanks for watching.